Matteo Messina Denaro. Lately, you might have heard about this mobster who has been on the run since 1993 until now. But how did Matteo Messina Denaro end up being apprehended by special troops in a Palermo private clinic? Who betrayed him? Or was it just his health? To understand how the most wanted man by Interpol got caught and his arrest happened, follow us. After 30 years on the run, Matteo Messina Denaro, Interpol's most wanted man, was apprehended. All criminals eventually come to an end. Sooner or later, they will be caught. But how could Donato escape from the authorities since 1993? The Power of Matteo Messina Denaro Matteo Messina Denaro was the head of the Cosa Nostra, a criminal syndicate consisting of multiple families from the region of Sicily. He had support and authority in every corner of the world, especially in southern Italy a region heavily influenced by the Mafia, where the presence of crime and illegality has been felt for decades, unlike in any other place. Donato didn't lack anything. He lived a normal life, but with another dignity. Allegedly, he is said to have controlled Cosa Nostra since Toto Rina's death in 2017. Rina was the boss and controlled the Mafia from prison. He was convicted in 1993 for the same crimes that Donato was wanted for. Once, he allegedly boasted that a graveyard could be filled with the people he had killed. Rina died in 2017 at the age of 87 while in prison, and Donato has taken over since. Donato was the boss of the Cosa Nostra, known as the Boss of Bosses, and even on the run, he had as much influence as Rina did. He controlled the Mafia through codes or messages written on small pieces of paper called Pizzini. What crimes was he wanted for? Matteo Messina Denaro had a history of deadly crimes starting since his early teens where he was associated with the Mafia because of his father, also a mafioso. Denaro was convicted of many crimes and murders, but the main ones are the 1992 killing of two anti-mafia prosecutors, Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino. The Sicilian prosecutors indicted 475 mafiosi for a variety of offenses related to mafia activity. The majority of them, 338 people, were found guilty and received sentences totaling 2,665 years not including the life terms given to 19 Mafia bosses. Both were killed in 1992, a few months apart, after Sicilian Mafia chief Toro Rina ordered their assassinations. Falcone was killed as he traveled along a highway near Palermo by explosives detonated by remote control, whereas Borsellino was killed by a car bomb near his mother's house in Palermo just months later. The deadly 1993 bomb attacks in Milan, Florence, and Rome were a series of bombings carried out by the Mafia that resulted in the deaths of 10 people and injured more than 100 others in the main Italian cities through car bombings, where hundreds of cars were destroyed and buildings were also badly damaged. The attacks were ordered by Chief Totorina and executed by Denaro and other members of the Mafia. The kidnapping, torture, and killing of Giuseppe Di Matteo, the 12-year-old son of a mafioso, Santino Di Matteo, who was an Italian mafia boss who turned state witness and provided crucial testimony against the Cosa Nostra. In the mid-1980s, Santino became a cooperating witness and provided detailed information about the inner workings of the mafia, including its leadership, operations, and rituals. His son was later kidnapped by Donato and other Mafia members, tortured, and held hostage for two years. They later strangled the boy. How was Donato caught after three decades on the run? On January 16, 2023, after 30 years on the run, 
the notorious mobster, now 60 years old, Matteo Messina Denaro was arrested, ending a three-decade-long hunt by the Italian Anti-Mafia Division. The investigation was brought up after two decades with no sign of Denaro. In 2011, police started carrying out investigations and cracked down on anyone suspected of aiding or protecting Denaro, arresting over a hundred people. Several of his collaborators were arrested recently in 2020, making him more vulnerable. Police wiretapped the homes of his family members, who, likely knowing they were being tapped, only spoke generally of people with cancer and cancer surgeries. This was enough for the people to assume that Denaro was seeking treatment of some sort. Investigators then gathered the details of all male cancer patients born in 1962 near Trapani in western Sicily and slowly narrowed down the search to five suspects. They identified a man who had booked a treatment under the name of Andrea Bonafede, the nephew of deceased mafia boss Leonardo Bonafede. But after analyzing Bonafede's phone records, they discovered that he was far from the clinic where he was meant to be having surgery one day, confirming that Denaro was likely using the name as an alias. Denaro was arrested just moments after entering the clinic on the morning of January 16th. It was said that more than 100 members of the armed forces were involved in the arrest and were taken to a secret location by the Carabinieri. The life Denaro made on the run. You would think that one of the most wanted men in the world would stay in a house like a prison without going out and seeing much sunlight, but that was not the case with Denaro. The mafia boss lived in a modest apartment in western Sicily in his final months as a free man, and it was suspected that he was hiding somewhere in southern Italy near Sicily since, like most mafia bosses, he stayed near the territory where he was safer and had much more influence on other people. According to later evidence, he was in Austria, Switzerland, Spain, Tunisia, and, of course, Greece, where he frequently went on vacation with other mafiosos. In 2010, he was reported to have been seen at a football match at the Renzo Barbera Stadium to watch the match between Palermo and Sampdoria, where he met with other mafia bosses. In these final months, he lived in a small apartment inside a two-story yellow building in the center of the town of Campobello di Mazzara, in the province of Trapani, in the heart of his territory. It's a normal, well-renovated, comfortable apartment. He'd be living there for at least six months, said Colonel Marco Bottino, the commander of the Trapani Carabinieri military police. Inside the house, which was discovered later on the day of the arrest and searched by investigators, were designer clothes, expensive shoes. According to neighbors, he was just a normal man who frequently visited the coffee shop and pizzeria of the town, and they had no idea he was a mafia boss. Donato had been on the list of the most wanted men in the world for more than 30 years. Yet, he was still living the high life thanks to the enormous sums of money his mafia had generated. What do you think of Matteo Messina Denaro? Write to us in the comments.